This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris Effects, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial. And in this lesson, I'm very excited to feature an effect from one of our sponsors, Boris Effects. And it's a great step up from an effect we already have in Media Composer, and I'm talking about a pan and zoom effect. Now, one thing that's important to keep in mind is that when the team at Avid gives us a tool, especially a tool like pan and zoom, it's a tool that's been around for a long time. And they give us the initial tool, but what they do is they rely on their great partner companies like Boris FX to take those tools and take them to the next level and keep developing them and adding new features into them. And in this lesson, I want to show you why if you do, it could be documentaries or if you work on news pieces or even shows like 48 hours that you see on television, this is an effect that you're definitely going to want to take notice of because it's got so many fantastic features in there, some of which are going to speed up your pan and zoom workflow in ways that you never even knew were possible. Now, before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well, if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro video training series on Media Composer, where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, now we're going to create a pan and zoom effect with this image here. Now, you're probably wondering what the size of the image is, but I'm going to wait until we actually get into BCC's pan and zoom to show you that because the effect is going to give us all of this information without us having to jump back and forth into an application like Photoshop. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. Now what's important to keep in mind is that when working with this effect, you can apply it in a few different ways to your timeline. You can apply the effect to a clip in the timeline, you can apply it to an empty layer in the timeline, or you can apply it between two clips in your timeline if, for example, you wanted to transition into and transition out of the effect. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to lay a clip down onto Video Track 1, and I'm going to apply the effect onto an empty layer on Video Track number 2. Let's call up the Effects Palette, Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows, and we are looking for BCC's Pan and Zoom. Now, you'll see that I have BCC Pan entered in the search window up here, but because I just opened the Effects Palette again, it didn't take that. We can again find it one of two ways by coming down to the perspective category, which is where BCC's pan and zoom is, or simply type in BCC pan in the search box and you'll see that it comes up right away. So let's take the filter, drag it and drop it down into V2. And you'll notice that right away we have some animation happening. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's kind of cool. Did it, you know, did it know what what clip you were looking for outside of Media Composer? Well, no, what it's doing by default is it's doing a pan and zoom to the clip that it's been applied to, which is a very cool feature of pan and zoom. Not only can you pan and zoom external files, but you can pan and zoom actual video in your timeline. Very cool. But for the purposes of what we're doing, I'm just going to remove video track one, and we're just going to stick with what we have on video track two. Now, we've got about 14 seconds in here, which I think is a good amount of time to do our pan and zoom effect. We're going to do a little zoom in on the Gulf of Mexico area. We're going to pause for a second. Then we're going to move over to sort of the Thailand area over here. And we're going to end right there. And we're going to add a couple other cool little bells and whistles uh, that we'll do right at the end. Okay, so we've got our effect applied in our timeline. Let's step into effects mode and let's get some things happening here. Now, I said that when we first apply pan and zoom to a clip in my timeline, it's automatically pan and zooming that clip. So what we want to do is direct it to that image on our desktop. So we're gonna head into the effects editor, we're gonna to come to the source, and as opposed to the host layer, which is currently selected, we're gonna choose an external file. Now, of course, we're gonna be prompted to choose that file. I'm just gonna select the external file button, and I'm gonna select our Pirate Expedition JPEG that's on the desktop. You'll see here on the Mac, I'm told how big this image is. But what's also very important is when I say open, and this clip is in my timeline, 
we're going to be able to see how big it is by coming down and turning on preview mode. As soon as I turn on preview mode, you'll notice that the source is 6000 by 3375, right over there in the lower right-hand corner of the window. Now, there's a couple things that I need to set up first, because what's going to happen, I'm just going to turn off preview mode for just one second. We're going to come back to it in just a second, is that you'll notice that by default, there's a hold on our move, and then it eases into it. And then it will ease out of the move and then hold again. Now, I don't mind the ease in and ease out. Now, if you're transitioning into this, you might not want that. You might want it to be a steady move. But for right now, I don't want those holds on my pan and zoom. So let's remove them. And that's done inside of the animation category. You'll see hold start, hold end, ease in and ease out. So I'm just going to set the hold start value to be zero. Now, you'll notice the value is set to 5. What does that represent? Well, 5 doesn't represent frames or seconds or anything like that. What it actually represents is percentage of the clip that it's applied to. So, for example, if you had a clip that's 10 seconds long, 5% of that is half a second. So keep that in mind when you're working with the hold start and hold end. Now, again, I'm just going to set the values to be 0. Now, we want to get in and start to set up our pan and zoom move. Now, we're going to need preview mode to do that. So let's come and let's turn preview mode on again right here. We're just going to turn preview mode on by clicking the checkbox. Now you'll notice that at the top of the window we have setup A, which is what we're viewing. Now the question is what exactly is going on with our animation? Well we have setup A, and we also have setup B. You'll notice if I drop down target mode there's setup B. Now the type of animation that we're doing is an AB auto animation. That's why everything's animating for us. So what that represents is the fact that we're going from position A, or setup A, to setup B, or position B. So we're going to want to set those two values separately of each other. Now, because by default we're on setup A in the preview target mode, we can come in right in the interface and set the window or the frame size that we want to start at. And you'll notice that as soon as I let go, in the upper right hand corner, we get a visual representation of exactly what the frame is going to look like, which is very, very handy as opposed to having to step out and step into the effect constantly. We can do it all right from within the interface. Now I've set setup A's position, and I want to set setup B's position now as well. So let's just switch to setup B. Let's move this over again, the Gulf of Mexico. We're just going to zoom right the way in, just like such. Okay, So we're getting in pretty close. Okay. Now let's just move so that we can see what the position of setup B is. You'll see that window gives us basically a view of our entire timeline. That's looking pretty good right there. Okay. And I'm pretty happy with this. So I think what I'm actually going to do right when I get to the end is I think I'm going to give it a little bit of a rotation. Now you're probably thinking I'm going to take the whole frame and just sort of rotate it, do a Z rotation. But this is something that I do want to point out about this effect, which I think is something that's important to keep in mind. We talked about, you know, we're working with BCC's pan and zoom as opposed to working with the Avid pan and zoom. Now, if you'd really like a comparison to see the real night and day difference between these two effects, I did a tutorial on Avid pan and zoom that I'm putting in as a link in the show notes below this tutorial. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that when Avid implemented Pan and Zoom inside a Media Composer, they added it and it really got no updates or anything like that since it was put in. The BCC Pan and Zoom effect is a little bit different. When it was put in, we didn't have the ability to do any 3D rotation with the Pan and Zoom effect, which is an effect that's a very good one to use depending on how you might want to utilize it. Well, the team at Boris Effects knew that, and so what they did was, in an update that happened just a little while ago, not only did they add a bunch of new filters to BCC, but they also updated this effect specifically. So this is one advantage to going with a third-party effect like BCC Pan and Zoom, which is the development of the effect continues. Avid relies on their partner companies like Boris Effects to get in and to do these effects and to take them to the next level after they've already gone in and sort of given you given you a little bite, they sort of let BCC come in and give you the main course, okay? So let's just step out of the effect for one second to see what's going on. I'm just going to turn off preview mode, and you'll see that this is actually looking pretty good, okay? Comes right down to about here. Now what's important to keep in mind is that this has been applied to the entire length of my timeline. Now what I think I'm going to do once we get right down to the Gulf of Mexico is give it just a bit of a rotation. Now if I come over to the rotation B and I start to drag it, you'll notice that we're back to that Z rotation, that standard rotation, and we don't want that. I want to give this a bit of a Y rotation to tilt the image a little bit. 
Now how we do that is to simply enable the 3D options. Now as soon as I do that, you'll notice that if I drag down, we now have access to rotation, spin, and tumble. So I can just give this a little bit of a rotation. Now what's important to keep in mind is that it's rotating from the center of the image. Now I'm gonna wanna zoom back just a little bit here. Let's go back to about 800 here, okay? I'm just gonna step into preview mode here just so that we can see, and this is actually very good that you can see now that once I step into preview mode, we now definitely get a look at exactly what is going on with the rotation of our image, okay? And I'm just gonna turn preview mode off, and this is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks, okay? So what we've basically done now is as we move in, we're rotating our image slightly, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold this position for maybe two or three seconds, and then as we move from the Gulf of Mexico over to the sort of Thailand area of Asia, what we're gonna do is not only rotate the image slightly, but we're just gonna zoom back just a little bit to create a very cool pan and zoom move. Now you're probably thinking that we're getting ready to head into keyframe territory like crazy, but believe it or not, we're not. And this is a huge, huge, huge feature of BCC Pan and Zoom. Let me show you what I mean. What we're gonna do is somewhere around the middle, let's say about the five second mark, we're gonna start our hold. And we're gonna have that hold for about, let's just say for about two seconds. So from about five seconds to about seven seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down to about the five second mark and we're going to add an edit right there. Now I'm gonna come down to about seven because we want it to be about for two seconds. And I think we're gonna have the move happen for about, let's just say about five seconds, then we're gonna hold on the end for another two seconds. Now I want you to watch what happens when I come back to the beginning here and I drag through. Here's the move that we know, very cool. Now watch this it's gonna jump back to the beginning again and do the exact same move again. And then it's gonna jump back to the beginning again. So basically what I've just done is I've repeated this effect, well, one, two, three, four times in our timeline, okay? So something weird's going on here. Well, believe it or not, this is actually the expected behavior. Now, why would we want this to be the expected behavior? Well, what we can now do, you'll remember we talked about that AB auto animation. So what I'm going to do now is I don't wanna do an AB auto animation. I just wanna sit on this B position for a little while. So if I step into the effect here at the second edit, and I head back over here to my animation, right above the animation parameters to the workflow, this is not an AB animation anymore. This is now just a transformation B. So what's gonna happen now is the pan and zoom is gonna zoom in and it's gonna pause right here. And what's gonna happen again is it's gonna loop again. But now what I wanna do is I wanna go from this B position to a new A position. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna step back into effects mode and I'm gonna change our workflow from an AB auto animation to a BA auto animation, okay? Now, of course, the A position is not correct and that's fine. Now, we're also gonna need to adjust this last parameter here because I added the edit. I should have waited until after we created this clip to add this edit, but don't worry, we can fix that in just a second, okay? So let's head back to preview mode. Here's preview mode, okay? And what we wanna do now is You'll see, we wanna switch our A position because we're sitting on our B setup right now. So let's do that. What we're gonna do is change to our A setup. There we go. And we wanna move our position over to about here. We're gonna zoom in a little bit. I don't want too much of this uh, compass here that's at the bottom of the map. We'll put ourselves about there and we wanna get in and do that rotation adjustment again. We wanna adjust that spin a little bit and let's just spin it back the other way here. Just like this, okay? Very cool, okay? Now, you'll see that if I, I'm just gonna switch off our preview mode here. You'll see now that as we move across the map like this, it's doing our rotation and it's gonna sit us right about here. Now, of course, this is not what we wanna have happen at the end, that's okay. What I'm gonna do is just extend our shot down so that the pan and zoom takes place over the entire length of this shot, but we're gonna stop it right here, why? Well, because remember, we just did a BA auto animation so then if I hold on the A position right here, what we've now basically done is without one single keyframe, created a very complex animation using BCC's pan and zoom very quickly and very easily. Now something else I wanna point out is that there's a whole bunch of other parameters that I could add in here if I wanted to, things like motion blur. I'm just gonna come back into our effect here. You'll see that if I pan down, 
you'll see that we have the ability to get in, we can crop our image, we can do motion blur, we can even add vignettes to our image right here from within Pan and Zoom. No extra effects are required. Now I did mention that now that I am happy with our element, that I did want to get in and add a couple extra little features just to take it to the next level. Well, let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new video layer by hitting Command and Y on the Mac, Control and Y in Windows. I've got a shot here called Sail Away. What we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to drop it into Channel 2, and what we're going to do is we're going to do this as a composite mode. I'm going to press Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows to call up the effects palette. Let's come down to our Key and Blend category. and We're going to choose the composite effect. I'm going to drag and drop down onto the shot just to create a very cool composite using a hard light transfer mode right here. And you'll see now that what we have is a boat moving across our frame as we do our pan and zoom. There we go. And I'm just going to grab and drag through just so you can see it in a little bit faster speed. And then if I wanted just to take this again to the next level, what we could do is just add another video layer. And I actually have a 3D extruded text element that I created just called Ocean Explorers. It does a little bit of a rotation. And now what we have is our pan and zoom. We have our boat still moving across. And we have our 3D extruded objects to create a very cool looking end composite. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that if you do a lot of pan and zoom work inside a Media Composer, BCC's Pan and Zoom is really going to step up your Pan and Zooms, make them look spectacular, and give you a ton of options that are really going to wow and amaze your clients every time. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris FX is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.